Hi guys, welcome back. So, today is gouache day. No, not wash day, gouache day. So let me get my tape down and my moleskin book and we'll get started. I'm trying to figure out a way to store my gouache because my I don't wanna mix it in with my watercolors. And I had bought this art bin that I showed you guys for brushes um, recently and I'm probably going to regret using this for this. I'll have to get a different container, but so far it's fitting. But I was thinking I'd probably put some of my brushes in there that um, for my oil painting or something. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I did use this and it closes barely. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and lay out some colors and just I'm just going to kind of make something up as I go. One thing though is that I want to start by now you could either use watercolor in the background you can use um, you can mix your watercolor and your gouache together now some watercolorists some purists will say absolutely not but unless you're doing something like a um, a paint out or or some kind of a judging type of a situation where you're going to be juried you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, you can do whatever the heck you want to do in art, pretty much. Um, but you should always know your color wheel, your complementary colors, secondary, tertiary, how to use an analogous color scheme versus, you know, complementary or split or whatever. Um, those things are good to know because basic rules still apply. But other than that, you can do whatever the heck you want to. So, um, some people will put their background down in watercolor and then build their opaque layers on top of that. Um, you can put them down kind of like in a, like you would as an oil painter, um, in a puzzle piece kind of a way. Or you can stack your colors one on top of another in washes or um, you can do the Grisai method or whatever, but um, there are different ways to do it and many people use different approaches. That's what I'm finding with the um, gouache. Some, like I showed you that artist the other day, he does very pale washes and then his palest colors are more opaque. But even those, they just kind of sink into the paper. They're not sitting on top of the paper. And then other artists will put that on very thickly, almost as if it's oil paint. And they get a very kind of cool oil paint type of a look to their to their color, so or to their painting. So there's different ways that you can do it. There's no right or wrong. Some people I've watched videos on, they will insist that you don't put gouache on thick like that. And then others will say, Yes, you put it on thick like that. And then others will say, you could do it either way. My attitude is you can do it however the heck it works for you and turns out beautiful. So go for it. So my method, I'm still learning, guys. So whatever you're seeing is just me either making mistakes or getting lucky. <laughs> so bear with me. Now, hopefully this video will not look too shaky or funky but I had it in time lapse when I recorded it which was super fast the painting was done in like 30 seconds so here I've slowed it down quite a bit to about a quarter of the speed but it's gonna make my hand look a little funky as I'm painting I apologize for that I wasn't even gonna post this and I thought ah, what the heck so here I'm just I was using up some color that I had already on my palette that was dry I mixed it in with a little bit of black it was some cerulean blue and black and and white that was dried up and then I used some yellow ochre and some yellow and uh, a red for the bottom portion of this now this was just made up in my head. At first I was thinking about my driveway where my cottage is. And then I thought about, you know, painting that and I turned it into a path instead. But as you will see, as this goes along, this is very symmetrical. See, I have the, the green distant trees on both sides. 
they're symmetrical. Now I have a tree in on the left, then I'll put a tree in on the right, then another one on the left, then another one on the right. My path is going right down the center. So this is what you do not want to do. Um, a good composition should not be centered. It should be off-centered. Um, think of the, um, oh, what do they call it? The rule of thirds, where if you split your rectangle into nine squares, you want to keep it in one of those, your, your focal point in one of those corners and not right dead center. So you want it offset. Now see, I've got two trees on the right, two trees on the left. They're not exactly the same, but it's too symmetrical. The same for the background with the trees. They're all the way across. And then the path is right down the center. And although it turned out, I think, somewhat pretty um, for fooling around with gouache, it's just not a good composition. I mean, <laughs> it's actually pretty bad. So, um, but I had fun with it. I, you, I just kept adding layers of color, and as I layered the color, I started to use the paint in a more thick fashion. I, I started out with it very watered down, and then I just kept building on it and building on it, except for the trees. Those I kept pretty heavy on the black side. Um, there is some burnt umber that's mixed in with that as well. Okay, as we come to the end of the painting, I just want to say, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great day, everyone. God bless.